on Facebook. Thank you. Good evening, Bante and all Kalyana Mita Sukihuntu. I'm Aliana and welcome to Suta Discussion, Day 49 by Bante Dr. Gango Dawila Chandima. Tonight, we are going to discuss the 24th session of Sigalowada Sutta. Sigalowada Sutta is the fourth sutta from the total of 10 suttas that have been chosen by Bante Chandima for this sutta discussion. For those who have missed our previous classes, please check on Tiratana Vihara Aman Perdana's Clan Facebook page and YouTube channel. We have uploaded the previous 48 classes there. The Sutta discussion uh, Zoom class is always open. Therefore, whoever that wish to join the class where we can engage directly with Bante can contact us on Tiratana Vihara Aman Perdana Clan's Facebook Messenger. We are always welcoming newcomers. Bante Dr. Gango Dawila Chandima will be a panelist at the World Buddhist Conference 2023 with the topic Future Proof and Past here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia on March 25th to 26th. This conference will be organized by Young Buddhist Association of Malaysia. Bante will be discussing the critical aspect of Sri Lanka's government's proposal to include the Tipitakas of UNESCO Memories of World MOW register. Therefore, there will, we would like to inform that there will be no Sutta discussion class on the coming March 24th. Now, please allow me to introduce about our speaker. Bante Dr. Gango Dawila Chandima currently is the Senior Advisor at Pati Sutta Canada, a virtual Dharma organization that helps beginner as well as expert students in learning Dharma in a variety of ways. Many people are interested in Dhamma Pariyasana, Pati Sota's most acclaimed interview series, which Bante conduct on a regular basis. You can check on Pati Sota with the link with www.patisota.blogspot.com. Bante Dr. Gango Dawila Chandima earned his PhD in Buddhist Studies in 2015 from University of Sri Jayawadenepura in Sri Lanka. From 2012 to 2015, Bante served as the Rewada Buddhist chaplain at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada. And in 2016, Bante was a research fellow at the Center for Studies in Religion and Society of the, U of the University of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Without further ado, you welcome us again, Bante. Thank you very much for a wonderful talk, Dr. Rosado. Thank you, Aliana. Thank you, Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh... Uh, day 49 of our Sutta discussion. It's been 49 days, almost going to be 50. I probably think I started uh, somewhere in March last year. Uh, so it's it's very happy to see that uh, we've been continuing for 49 days. <laughs> right? Every day we spent almost hour and a half of time. And then uh, we're going to finish this Sutta today. Uh, and then we're going to be starting a new Sutta from next week. So that means uh, with our 50th day, 50th uh, day of Sutta discussion, we're going to be starting the, uh, I guess, the most important Sutta. Uh, and also the first Sutta the Buddha delivered to anybody. Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta from next uh, Friday. Uh, so that's the plan. And today I see new folks here. Uh, Welcome, Maliana. She's always here. <laughs> and Lim is facilitating with all these uh, online things. And then uh, we have Sadris. We have uh, uh, Na Yang. I think she's one of the sisters of Na. There are three Na's today. One, two, three. <laughs> so uh, uh, the, the third one is the, the youngest, I guess. So she's joined. She said to me, Bhante, I have no knowledge about anything in the God. Don't know more. You know? We start from uh, the beginning. Like, you know, I mean, uh, our plan is to learn, uh, especially help someone to learn from the uh, basics. Okay? Uh, but while you are studying, you will learn the rest of the things. So it is nothing to be worried about. And I, I don't expect that you need to be, uh, I would say, uh, students of uh, deep Dhamma knowledge, right? Maybe you can perceive that, uh, pursue that uh, as time goes by. And we have Kelvin here now. Oh, we have Sherry. Oh, 
uh, Sherry is joining after some time from Singapore and Sita from Indonesia and uh, uh, now sister and I probably think some others might join uh, as time goes by. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is to pay homage to the Buddha three times as a respect for his teachings. So first, let's say, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Let's pay homage to the Buddha. Namo tasse bhagavaku arahapu samma sambuddhase. Namo tasse bhagavaku arahapu Samma Sambuddhase Namo Tasse Bhagavatu Arehatu Samma Sambuddhase. What's the meaning of that? I haven't asked that from anybody. What's the meaning of Namo Tasse Bhagavatu Arehatu Samma Sambuddhase? Namo means homage, right? Respect. Uh, tasse, that means homage to somebody, yeah? to here. Yeah? Arehatu. Namotasa Bhagavatu Arahatu Samma. So there are three terms to understand. Bhagavatu Arahatu Samma. But what is Bhagavatu? What is Arahatu? What is Samma Sambhutas? Are these three people? Now I will uh, start this with a simple uh, explanation. Probably I'm going to ask you because you uh, have a background, right? At least a little background. No matter what, sometimes you're going to talk about very deep suttas, but it's funny enough to know that, uh, learn that uh, you might have no basics after knowledge. So this comes from the Itipiso, Itipiso statement. Itipiso Bhagava Arahang Samma Sambhutu Vicha Charana Sampa Sukatu Lokavitu Anuttaru Purusadam Sar Sapta Devam Sar Uttu Bhagava. I think all of you know this, huh? when you go to the temple. You're going to what you call recite uh, gathas, stanzas, verses to respect, right? Is anybody is this is this uh, new to anybody over here? How about uh, our new folks today? Is this new to you? Have you ever heard this, or is this the first time you hear this? Thing? You mean the namotasa? Not namot. Uh, yeah, namotasa. <laughs> that, that phrase, yeah, we, we used to chant that before our prayers. Oh, okay. It's not new to you. No, it's not. How about others? I think all the others should be okay. How about you now? Is this new to you? Not new to you, right? Okay. Start from known to unknown. <laughs> uh, let's translate this. What are these uh, three terms? Where are they mentioned? Now, of course, this is mentioned in the homage uh, to the Buddha. But how do, we under, how do we know the meaning of this script? In order for us to know the meaning, you have to go to the Itipiso statement. Because Itipiso is for the Buddha, then uh, Swakhato for the Dhamma, and then Supatipanno is for the Sangha. Now, let's uh, uh, clarify what is that first one. Namo Tassa. Bhagavato. What does Bhagavato mean? We know that all these are meant to uh, understand the Buddha's qualities. Another three of the Buddha's, three of the nine of the Buddha's qualities. What does Bhagavato mean? I hope I'm not going to put you the difficulty yeah, at the beginning. Simple stuff, huh? Very simple. <laughs> Anybody knows, even the Dhamma school children. What does Bhagavato mean? The blessed one, Bhante. Yeah, the blessed one. Okay. That's the English mean, right? The blessed one. But what does it really mean? It says the Buddha has eliminated Raga. We call it Bhag. Uh, let me write that for you. This is what, you know. Bhagga. Bhagga means okay. So bug. Start from bug, Bhagavan. That means Buddha has 
fully eliminated low uh, rag and then those bagga raga bagga dosa bagga mo let me write that for you bagga raga bagga dosa and bagga mo i think you all know what is raga right raga means uh, uh, lust dosa means uh, hatred and moham delusion so he has fully eliminated that is how we understand the quality of the buddha called by Bhagava, Bhagaraga, Bhagadusa, Bhagamo. That means whenever you see a Buddha statue, whenever you want to visualize the Buddha, is it possible for you to come up with Raga, Dosa, and Moha? It's not possible to, for you to come up with Raga, Dosa, and Moha because you are respecting someone who has overcome, uh, who has eliminated Raga, that means lust, Dosa, means hatred, Moha, means delusion, fully. Not even a drop of thing that he left. Now this is Bhagavad. So bless the blessed one comes from this perspective. You say somebody who is somebody to be blessed only when that person has fully eliminated. You are saying that my son is a blessing to me. This is a blessing to me. That is the conventional idea. But uh, if you look at the uh, full idea that goes with Bhagava, that is that is a deeper meaning. That has a deeper meaning. Then. Namodasa Bhagavatu Arahato. What does Arahato mean? This one. An Arahan. An Arahan. Now we have to go after who is an Arahant. <laughs> Arahant. What is Arahato? Arahato means. What's the usual translation for Arahato? Anybody wants to the, try? The worthy one? The worthy one. I think that that is just a partial translation because uh, it is said the Buddha is ara, Arahato because he has cut the radius of the sansara. Anybody knows the word called radius? Right? This is very usual in science, maths, huh? radius. If the if the sansara is a uh, is a is a is a round. We call it sansara. Is a round. Somebody has to cut the radius. So, so the sansara, the wheel of sansara is not continuing anymore. Uh, he cut it. He cut it permanently. Radius of the sansara, arahato. So one meaning is that. Second meaning is worthy one. He is eligible to receive offerings from the humans and the devas. This is another meaning. Okay, so there are two meanings. So I would say worthy. So that is why uh, Dhamma folks, we cannot translate some of the Pali words in one way. So there are multiple meanings that are carrying all the time. Now, next time when I ask, what is Arahato? There are two things to remember, okay? Uh, Lim, uh, am I able to uh, share something over here? Okay, make me a co-host. Okay, that is Arahato. Then, Namotasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Now, let's translate Samma Sambuddhasa to. Anybody wants to try to say the meaning of it? Samma Sambuddhasa. What is Samma Sambuddha? We know what is Buddha. How about fully enlightened being? Fully enlightened being. Okay, so that's pretty clear. But how do we how do we understand this particular word from uh, I would say from the Pali context? Now, uh, Sadiris, uh, have you ever heard there are three types of Buddhas in the text? One Buddha is Arahanta Buddha. Even every Arahant is called as a Buddha. Then the second category, if you look at it from a I would say uh, from an ascending order, you see the Pacheka Buddha. Pacheka. Some people translate to be private Buddha. <laughs> I don't know how how uh, how okay is that private? No. How is private Buddha? Right. I would say uh, probably we call him as Pratyeka Buddha, Pacheka Buddha as it is. 
What's the difference between Pacheka Buddha? Uh, thank you, Lim. Difference is he is going to be like a full Buddha, but he's not going to be a full Buddha because he cannot teach Dhamma to others. He doesn't, he teaches, but people don't uh, feel, feel uh, you know, uh, comfortable to attain Nibbana. They are not uh, enough to go to that level because of his teachings. It's not enough. Then the highest one is full Buddha, Samma Sambuddha. Samma Sambuddha means someone who has attained the Buddhahood without anybody's help. Uh, Samma means without anybody's help. Now, Pacheka Buddha, they need some help. And Arahant, definitely they need some help from another Buddha or something. So how do we translate this one? Homage to the Buddha who is worthy. You can say who has even cut the radius of the sansara. And then who, who is self-enlightened, self aware self, self who, who is fully awakened by himself. Uh, so I hope that you learn something today. Yeah? So next time when I ask, what is Namo Tas Bhagavatu? Arahatu Samma Samudas. You can't like just stay without telling me the meaning. You know the meaning now. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. Now let me ask you again. What is Arahato? Uh, sorry, what is Bhagavato? Bhagavato means <coughs> the one who has fully eliminated, fully eliminated Raga Dosa and Moha. Moha. Yeah, Raga Dosa Moha. And then Arahato, two meanings. One who has cut the radius of the sansara, wheel of the sansara, and at the same time, who is worthy to receive offerings from the uh, manusas and the devas, humans and devas, deities. Samma Sambuddhas, one who has self awakened, self awakened without anybody's help. Okay, this is an additional teaching. Huh? This is not the uh, topic of today, of a class today, session today. Okay, so let me uh, talk to our uh, new folks today. So we have three uh, over here. So we have been uh, learned, we have been actually discussing about a couple of suttas uh, since day one. We discussed about Mangala, we started from Mangala Sutta, it's a very basic sutta. Uh, wherein you see blessings, how to create blessings. And we discuss uh, Ratana Sutta. And then we discuss Metta Sutta. And then we started the Singhalovada Sutta. I probably think we have been discussing the Singhalovada Sutta for over 24 weeks. That means almost around six months. Uh, six months. Now don't worry. Should I learn all these? Yeah. It depends. It depends. I would say that you have to, because we are starting a new sutta, whenever you have time, if you could, if you have time, go back and you can learn. But today we have a, uh, we have a pictorial book. I think Aliana already shared that with you. That book shows the most important parts of what we discussed. Now, I think I have that, that one too. Let me just... Uh, uh, show you a little bit so then you will find that this is a little easier to you know uh, trace and then let's go to the last responsibilities okay I think one of you have earned already a certificate or diploma in Buddhist studies or something? Somebody told me. Is it true? I don't know. Probably. Should be easier for all of you. <laughs> okay. It's coming up. Yeah. 
I think all of you can see this uh, pictorial book. Actually, I did not uh, show this to you. Initially, Lim suggested this book through Aliana, and I said to Aliana, you know, this is not the time because we are we are studying with uh, the Sutta Central text and uh, translation because I have some issues with translation here. But this is a good one to see at the end of our discussion one day. That is why I asked her to share today. Now, if you go to this uh, book, hmm, you can see easily. It's not a very lengthy book, 62 pages. Okay. Probably this is uh, the picture where Sigala is meeting the Buddha on the way, and he's respecting uh, six directions. Huh? He is not a Buddhist, but his mom and dad, they were Sotapannas. Uh, so uh, his mother and father uh, devise a plan because our son is not going to see the Buddha. So we should plan something. What, how, what kind of a plan should we do? Maybe we cannot say to our son, go see the Buddha. So we will ask our son, when we pass away, when we die one day, you should respect six directions. I would say east, west, north, south, uh, top, bottom, something like that. They had known that when he keeps doing that, he will meet the Buddha one day on the road. And then the Buddha will teach him the correct directions. That was their plan. That is how this young man, Sigali, is meeting the Buddha. Uh, see, this is uh, probably uh, Sigala's father. Is trying to say something to him. Ah, see, he's doing the respect to the directions. Other people are also noticing him. He's meeting the Buddha on the road. Okay, uh, this is interesting. I think we started from this area. Uh, before the Buddha told him, uh, taught him about the responsibilities between different people, the Buddha said there are six ways by which your money is going to be wasted. Okay, there are six ways. So these were the stuff that we talked. Uh, loss of wealth, uh, right? Six peril, right? Uh, loss of good character, increase of quarrels, indecent exposure, diseases, right? Sorry, these are actually, these are the results of uh, drinking alcohol kind of stuff, intoxicants. Right, actual loss of wealth, loss of good character, increase of quarrels. Actually, you can see this in our translation too. The Buddha primarily teaches him six uh, dangers when you are consuming uh, intoxicants, right? But at the same time, we discuss that uh, it is not about. Uh, we, it, it is not something that we can ask people stay away from intoxicants. Uh, probably it can be a social drink. But this is something like this person is drinking overly too much, having no limits, no moderation probably. It is okay. It's good that if you can avoid, but in case you can't because of your social structure, at least you limit, you limit the intake of such. So you are comfortable. You are not having these six dangers there. Then, the Buddha talks about some dangers of uh, walking uh, on the streets at uh, uh, unsuitable times, right? You can get caught by other people. See, looks like it's a thief huh? coming behind. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah, there are also, this is another uh, section where the Buddha says, where are you going to um, uh, lose your money? That means uh, you are going to gamble. You are going to party a lot, right? And then, sorry, uh, you are going to you are going to parties a lot, dancing, singing. And then this one is about you are going to gamble. You're gonna lose lots of money for that too. And also, when you uh, associate bad friends, Papa Mita, thereby also you are uh, having lots of dangers. So we need Kalyan Mithas. Uh, the, and also the Buddha said there are dangers when you are very lazy. You don't want to practice Dhamma. You don't want to learn 
Dhamma, you don't want to listen, you don't want to learn. So then you are having lots of dangers because of your laziness. See, he says or she says it's too hot, too cold, too early, too late, too hungry. Right? These are excuses to be lazy. After that, we discuss uh, four good friends and four bad friends. So this is the first bad friend, Anugatuhara. Second bad friend, Vachi Parama. You can read them. Third bad friend, Anupya Bani. The fourth bad friend, Apaya Sahaya. And then the four good friends, Upa, Upakaraka, Samana Sukaduka, Attakai, Anukampa. You see that uh, with these bullet points, their characteristics are huh? Anukampa. Okay, now at this point, the Sutta, Sigaluvada Sutta starts talking about responsibilities. Now, the first responsibility is about the eastern part, eastern direction, uh, which uh, happens between children and parents. See, children, what are the uh, responsibilities that a child has to do for his parents huh? and vice versa? What should parents do for their children? See, there are five. And then teachers. Now here, students, what students have to do for their teachers and then what teachers have to do for their students. This is the southern direction. And then we come down to spouse. Uh, I would say husband and wife. So there are uh, five responsibilities ev that every husband has to do for his wife. And then also there are five responsibilities every wife is supposed to do for his uh, her husband. So this is the western direction. See, this five. And then we discuss about friends and uh, colleagues. It's the northern direction. What uh, uh, you should do for your colleagues, other friends, even you have friends. And also what those other friends supposed to do for you. Now you can check with your friends, huh? whether my friends are doing this, whether I'm doing for my friends, these responsibilities. And then we came down to employer and employee responsibility. So there are five things that uh, every employer has to do for his or her employees. And also there are five responsibilities that every uh, employee, those workers, even the servants, mates in your household should do for his or her uh, employers and masters. Uh, this is the one that we're going to finish today and then uh, we're going to finish end the sutta. Uh, then the, what you call uh, relationship between uh, daikas, devotees and the monks and nuns. Huh? So we discuss about what devotees are supposed to uh, fulfill for monks, nuns, bhantes, reverence, venerables. And today we're going to discuss the, the second part of that, what monks and nuns are supposed to uh, monastics should do for their devotees. We, we're going to read from our translation, but just to say this. Yeah, at the end of the sermon, Sigala became a follower of the Buddha. Right? Yeah, this is good. Some of the explanations, annotations here. Okay, so uh, this is the Pali text. Don't worry. I normally ask our friends to read, Nam folks to read, just to get familiar with some Pali, you know. Never ever always depend on a monk. <laughs> you can learn too, right? So, I mean, we respect monastics, but you should also be able to read some Pali. Today, we're going to do from here, I guess. Okay. From here. Uh, and then we go to translation. We've got a translation over here, I guess. It's going to be 30, 33, I think. Okay, who would like to read today? It's going to be the last paragraph, I would say. Our new folks, do you dare to read the paragraph? Don't worry, everybody makes mistakes.
Anybody wants to try? Just keep reading the text where I highlighted over here. You may go. Okay, Bante, I'll try. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Emma. Imeko Gaha Pati Puta Panchahita Nehi Kula Putena Uparima Disa Samanar Brahmana Pachu Patinta Chachita Nehi Kula Putam Kula Putena Uparima Disa Samana Brahmana Pan Am I right? Pan yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I read that. I read that already. It's the next line. Uh. Anukapanti papa nibaranti kalyane nive kalyane 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 nive senti kaye nena manasa anukapanti mm -hmm. asuptam saventi sutam pariyo da penti Saga, sagasa mangam achi kandi ime hi ko gahapati puta panchadhi tanehi kula putena uparima disa samana brahmana panchu patita ime hi chahi tanehi kula puntam anukampanti Ewa masa esa uparamima disa pati chana hoti kema apati bayati. Okay, great. Let me read to Imehi ko. When you read Pali, make some pauses. Don't try to keep reading. Imehi ko gahapati put panchehi tane pulaputte na. Uparima Disa Samana Brahmana Pachupatita Chahi Tanehi Ulaputta Anukampanti. Now these are the responsibilities coming up now. Papa Nivari, the number one. Kalyani Nivese Kalyane Manasa Anukampa. Number three. Asutang Savit, number four. Sutang Pariyudapi, number five. Sagasa Magang Achikanti, number six. Okay, now there are six responsibilities every monk, nun, Bhante, Venerable Reverend, supposed to do for his or her devotees. For you, huh? Imehiko Gahapati Putte, Panchahitani, Kula Putte, Uparima Disa. Samana Brahmana Pachupatita Imehi Chahitani Kulaputta Anukampa Eva Masa Esa Uparimadsa Pati Channa Uti Kema Apati Bayati. Now let's move on to the English translation. Uh, anybody wants to read? Yeah, our new folks, you want to try? Na Yen, would you like to try this thing? Should be easily. It's in English. Anybody of you want to try reading the English translation? If not, any others? Okay, anybody else? Yeah, Sadris, please go ahead. Uh, please unmute too. And workers and and workers uh, and servant. Uh, not not there, Sadris. Uh, it's under 33. 33? Yeah, 33, second para. Start with which one? And uh, and ascetics and Brahmin, Brahmins, Brahmanas. Okay. And ascetic and Brahmins, so respected, replicate with compassion in six ways. Mm -hmm. By restraining you from wrongdoing, guiding you from good action, thinking compassionately, telling you what you ought to know, 
clarifying what you already know and show you the path to heaven. In so this you... way, mm -hmm. in this way, the upper direction is protected and made peaceful and secure. Okay, this is great. what the Buddha said. Okay, great. Okay, so now it's pretty clear. So let's go to the Pali because I wanted to show you something. Imehiko Gahapati Putta, thus uh, householder, that you should know that this is how you should uh, fulfill your responsibilities towards uh, monks and nuns, bhantes. And then when monks and nuns are being respected by responsibilities from the lay people's side, then lay, uh, monks and nuns are supposed to fulfill responsibilities for. Uh, for their devotees. This is how it is starting. Papa Nivarenti. Now let's figure out this thing. Papa Nivarenti. Okay. I'm going to stop the sharing now. Papa Nivarenti. What is Papa Nivarenti? What is Papa? Not Papa, right? Papa. <laughs> Papa. Huh? Let me let me uh, send you a chat over here, Papa. Papa. Sin I would say unwholesome too. Wrongdoing. Yeah, wrongdoing too. Now the word sin is more towards um, the original. Uh, I would say wrongdoing that was done by those folks. In a, in a different religion. So we call uh, unwholesome, unwholesome uh, acts. So a monk or a nun never allow a devotee to do wrong, evil actions, bad actions towards anybody. They cannot motivate any devotee to do anything wrong. So they have to, they have to keep them away from the bad. Let's say that you're going to talk to a monk Bante, you know that it's so bad that they did so we're gonna do this you know <laughs> so if the monk is yeah yeah you should do that you know they are so bad people right pretty bad people let's do it that's not their way so you know you know this is not a good thing so you know we have to get away from this thing probably you mistaken misunderstood so they have to tell them that this is bad Unless you tell them, unless a monk and nun tell you this is not a good thing, right? Probably there are very little subtle things that the devotees don't know, right? Sometimes the, the bad things happen from very slight little areas of our actions, right? So whenever they can show in a very kind way, okay, not in a, in a way that they are not feeling comfortable, that is, a, that is a responsibility from a monk or a bhante site. Papa means evil, I would say unwholesome. Nivarenti means they prevent, monks and nuns prevent dayakas, lay people, from doing bad acts, evil acts. Primarily speaking, what are they? They are five precepts. Basically, they are five precepts. What are the five precepts? What are they? Not, not restrain killing. from killing. Uh -huh. No killing. No, no, no lying. Uh, let's go in order. No things without no permission. Not, not taking what's not given. Yes. Uh, not taking what's not given. And then third one. Not misbehave. misbehave. And then the fourth one? Lying. Uh, lying. Last one? Not taking uh, any beverages and, or food. Intoxication. intoxication. Yeah. Fine. Intoxication is the final level. Uh, because some people, they misunderstand. When you say intoxicant, ah, soft liquor and hard liquor, right? Th that's what we're going to say. We're going to say any food or any beverage that will take you to a place where you can't make a sound judgment. Even the rice, if you take four or five plates of rice, you feel ah, browsy at the end. That is, then, then whatever action you do, even when you drive, you might hit somebody on the road because you are not in the right mind. 
whatever the food, whatever a beverage that will stop, that will disturb your sound mind is going to make that. But um, Surah Mary, I think I, I already shared with you in the Mangala Sutta, there is a specific meaning about some alcohol stuff. But that has even the rice. Why is it? We talked about some uh, surah. Uh, that means even some even rice has lots of starch because the, there is a certain alcohol some people make with lots of starch from the rice. Actually, when people say that I'm sleepy after eating rice, that means they have consumed lots of starchy rice. Right? Glutinous rice. Huh? Glutinous. Glutinous, Glutinous rice. rice. Yes. Now, yes. Uh, in the past, people did not cook with the rice cookers. So then the rest of the starch is going to overflow from the pot. Now, with the new rice cooker, it's, it's very handy and useful to all of us. All the starch going to accumulate in the bottom, right? So people get sugar issues, uh, other problems, right? But the starch can make you drowsy at the end, right? And that, uh, as Emma said, the uh, glutinous aspect too. Um, even other drinks, whatever the food, whatever the drink. So the idea here is that five precepts. So monks are not trying to encourage you to onans encouraging you to do any bad act. Now, five precepts are basic stuff. Actually, what is the real Buddhist stuff? They are called as Dasa Kusala. I think I, I uh, discussed with you many times about these 10. It is a broader explanation about uh, our actions. What are they? Let me ask you one more time, huh? probably before Singhala Vanda Sutta is going to end. What are they? What are the 10 kusalas or 10 akusalas. Killing. No killing, no, no, the five preceptors, is it right? Uh, some precepts are not taken, some are taken. Uh, let's, let's go in an order so you understand. Uh, by the body. body, speech, mind. Speech. Yeah, that, mind that's yeah. the easiest way. Body, body three, speech. Three, yeah. Speech for four. There are four for the speech, three for the mind. It's pretty mm. easy for us to understand. Mm. So there are three akusalas, unwholesome actions for the body. What are they? Killing, stealing, killing, stealing and lying. misbehaving. Mm -hmm. They happen from our body, right? Then what are yes. the four bad activities from your speech? Lying, uh -huh. slander, Indemnity. using harsh speech, harsh speech, and gossiping. 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 How do we understand slandering? It's a little difficult word in English. Slandering, talking behind the back. You talk something to somebody, you are the greatest person. Huh? Then when you go to another person, you're going to say, No, this is not. You know, he's the worst guy I know ever. Such a bad guy. Even just now, when I talk to that person, this happened. You're trying to make a Conflict between two people. As Buddhists, we should never do that. That is Pisuna Vacha. Harsh words mean culturally, <clears throat> religiously sensitive words. Huh? So we have to be very careful when we talk whether my use of speech is okay with my friend, other people. Are they getting hurt? Then last one is gossip and idle chatting. Whether do I misuse my speech yeah. by just spending, wasting my time, right? Unnecess with unnecessary things. Because when some people get to talk, they don't know what they are talking. They, right? They spend many hours of just talking, right? Those are the four uh, akusalas for the speech. Then what about the mind? Oh, overly greed. There are three bad activities for the mind. Aliana, what did you say? Uh, excessively greedy, excessive greed, mm -hmm. hatred, have, and an ill, we ill have will. a particular word for that in English covetousness. Covetousness mm -hmm. means uh, extreme, extreme greed. That means greed is kind of a common thing to like you might not accept that you have greed, but we have some elements of greed. But this abhicha called covetousness is. It's dangerous, you know. 
So extreme greed. The second was hatred. Hatred. Uh, it's not the hatred. hatred. It's much, Papa, much you, worse. You? Much you worse will. than hatred. Ill you will. will. Ill will. will. Uh, you thoughts will. of thoughts of killing somebody. Thoughts of assassinating somebody. Actually, it is more severe than killing because killing happens when you have it. Right? Now, killing, actual killing happens when you have that thought. Buddha said, for some reason, if you come up with the thought of ill will, try to get rid of it right away because you should not develop it. You should not tolerate it so bad. Right? Now, I think... Uh, I have heard uh, from many prisoners in the prisons, you know, the pris prisoners in the prisons. They say, if I, if, I, if I could manage one short moment at that time of the murder, I could have saved my, my life from the person I killed. They are confessing. If I could spend one short, probably a couple seconds, I would have never killed that person. See, the importance of the minute or the or couple seconds. That means the ill will. They are very worried about that. How did they spend that moment? If I gave a little bit of more time, I would have become a different person, totally different person. Ill will is very dangerous. In case that happens, why does it happen to us? Because things happen the way that we don't want. So when things happen the way that we don't want, try to tolerate. Right? That's the solution. Then you try to practice some vipassana, why it is happening to me. You can't practice vipassana when, when things happening like that right at the time. At, at the moment, at that particular moment, try to tolerate it, no matter what. Later on, you can go back to the incident, why it happened, why I came up with that particular part. It's okay. okay. Some people are trying to uh, go to vipassana right away. So they are dealing with very people that they don't like. So they can't do it right away. As a second, Akusala. Third Akusala is now we said wrong view. Yeah, uh, ill will and wrong view. wrong view. Wrong view means it's not the correct view, right view. To, de to deny the working of karmas? Ah, that is one of the aspects of that. Deny the uh, workings of karma. Uh, res not respecting mother, father, right? Not believing in karma. So these are the so monks and nuns are supposed to prevent their dayakas executing, doing these 10 akusalas or 5 precepts. That is a responsibility that a monk and nun has to do. Does it make sense, our new folks? Is it clear to all of you? Yes. Is it? Okay. Yes, Pante. You, you can ask any questions anytime huh? if you don't understand. You can ask any time, any question. So this is a very come and, come and see kind of session. Ehi pasiko, ehi come, pasiko, see. There's no hanky-panky here, right? There's nothing to the next moment. Everything happens in the moment, right at the moment. Papa nivare. Okay, what's the second responsibility? Kalyani nivesen. Let me uh, send it to you through uh, chat over here. Save our time. Okay. Kalyani, anyway. So what is Kalyani? Kalyani means. Kalyani now, if Papa Ante. means bad activities or akusalas, then Kalyani means good. Good. <laughs> or wholesome. Wholesome. Yeah. I would go for wholesome because good can be different from one culture to the other culture. Right? Um, Is it? Yeah. You go to another country, another culture, they might say this is okay. Right? Um, they say it's okay. Right? Uh, yeah. If you go to another culture, they might say this is not good. Right? Kalyani so, yeah. So good and bad uh, have to be attached to wholesome and unwholesome. When you put wholesome here, that means kusala side. Kusala side of your actions. Right? Now, 
the second responsibility of monks and nuns is kalyane nivesanti ah now they now i understand that you also know uh, monks and nuns have to deal with all the daikas devotees in a temple is it a very easy thing uh, dhamma folks an easy thing for, for a monk to deal with all these different people who come to the temple one devotee wants to know um, something the other devotee wants to know something other third devotee wants to do something else in the temple now if you, if you take like that 100 people these 100 people might have very different ideas probably there is a good group but many of them they have their certain different ideas of you know thinking spirituality temple activities i uh, understood from one monk uh, in, in america he said uh, panthi i am dealing with uh, all these sri lankan people I said yeah it's good yeah it's, it's not a big deal right no it's a big deal he said to me i said okay what's the big deal now in sri lanka uh, you deal with the devotees around the temple like around the temple maybe the village around the because when there's a temple all the devotees around the, the temple area come to the temple of Adana. But here, these Sri Lankan people come from many cities in Sri Lanka. They are, their ways of offering dana, their ways of practicing Buddhism is, is different from my dayakas in the temple back in Sri Lanka. So I have to deal with them differently. They have get used to different monks. They have got used to different, uh, uh, what you call, areas different areas of you know buddhism there are basic things but the way how they do it has to be understood by a monk so i think it's a difficult thing but when the monk and nun understand the devotees well then it is easy for him to for her to deal with them so uh, asking them to do more good things more wholesome things must be done within that perspective so it's not that uh, uh, although it's theoretically okay, but practically there may be some challenges, right? Because uh, monastics have to, especially in the present day monastics, they have to go with the financial uh, part of the temple too. So they have to deal with the devotees in a bit careful way because they want devotees because they are the people who are running the temple. So, you know, when you're talking to them, they might have to think, not like the Buddhist time, huh? At the Buddhist time, monks did not live in many temples. They were just wandering monks. The second responsibility, so, is uh, asking them to practice wholesome acts. That means not to do killing, not to steal, and all that. Any questions about these two? Before we jump on to the third one. Now I'm going to ask you a cross question. Now we have been doing many responsibilities until today uh, between different people, starting from mother, father, children, teachers, husband and wife, employer, employee, uh, friends and colleagues, uh, so many people, right? Have you ever noticed the first two responsibilities of a monk and nun towards devotees mentioned elsewhere in the list of duties, responsibilities. Something to think about. Have you found these first two responsibilities of monks and nuns elsewhere in other people's responsibilities somewhere? Parents. Parents. Uh, you got it. That means parents are the ones who do this for the first time for anybody, not the monks and nuns, because when somebody goes to the temple, it's a bit late. At probably that child might be in his or her uh, early, you know, time. But before that time, mother and father should have a responsibility. They have to teach their children. This is not a good thing. Don't do this. this is a good thing. Hold something. Continue doing. That is their response. Now I think what the monks and nuns are doing here is the second part of that. Those two responsibilities, higher part of those two responsibilities. So the monk, 
father mother might not know a lot of higher dhammas so when you send ch children to the temple for the dhamma school or when you go to the temple at a later time of your life then they are teaching you the rest of the wholesome and what is wholesome and what is not wholesome teachings then who who should start this uh, wholesome and unwholesome uh, things in anybody's life mother and father mother father are not just people who are creating children that is incorrect to buddhism mother father i think for every mother and father unless they have other children they are learning parenting from their children right yeah they have no other uh, experience of bringing up children right only when they have children they get to learn what is parent but they should not fail in that because while it's an experience and also they have to play a part in it so they have to teach their children son or daughter this is not a good thing this is a, an unwholesome thing so they have to teach all that but the higher version of wholesome and unwholesome will be taught by monks and nuns now you understood these two responsibilities are mentioned under the parents part towards children okay let's go to the third one then if you don't have questions at the moment kalyane manasa anukampa kanti as a third responsibility okay? see okay kalyane manasa anukampa kanti what does it mean it means with kindness with kindness and guide a good guidance to okay. to guide them okay now monks and nuns are supposed to guide their dayakas but when they guide they have to guide with compassion kindness they cannot guide uh, uh, like a uh, soldier right like in an army camp <laughs> you should do this you should have to wake up this time they can't do that they have to guide them with compassion how do you know that the monks and nuns are guiding you with compassion tell me how you feel it if you have this experience in your life how do you feel that the monks and nuns that you know in your life they have done that with compassion they are patient they are patient that is one very good uh, way to find out that they are compassionate other way another way the soft language that they they speak soft language that means you are not getting hurt if you have been ever hurt uh, in a, that kind of environment probably something may have gone hey why right, <laughs> right? you are not hurt because they understand you properly it's like a doctor right just because you are messed up the doctor is not going to be messed up be patient <laughs> you are a patient right right whenever you go to the doctor's place although you are messed <laughs> up but doctor is very patient supposed to be. and they're going to treat you very calm they he knows what to do he she knows what to do there's no problem but you don't know how he is going to do it but it's okay he's going to do it he's going to do it in the same way we understand that we are not getting hurt we see that they are patient truly patient and then teaching us with compassion so you feel are there any other ways where you feel compassion from the monks and nuns in the temple listen attentively ah uh, listen in part they listen to you more than talking it's, it's very good because uh, active listening is very important for a monastic because passive uh, listening is not good right yeah active listening any other ways where you feel you have noticed that the monks and nuns that you know they are very patient they are very compassionate to you they won't take sides they yeah. won't take sides uh, yeah. when, de when dealing with devotees they don't take sides why is it you take side okay? but but probably they have to say that this is this is what 
he they, they, they might think but at the end they try to do something for the both parties something fair enough to the both parties try to keep the both parties try to be in between try to be in between not try to take the side of somebody which creates kind of a split within the devotees if you if a monk is creating split inside their devotee circle it's going to be having lots of effect to the community so, so these are very interesting and very challenging things too okay what are the other aspects where you feel the monk is very kind none is very kind to you uh, i mean compassionate to you in your real examples you don't have to say anybody's names that will protect their names, privacy. But how did you feel? Active listening, patience, not taking sides, not being hurt. No judgment. No prior judgment, no preconceived thoughts before any issue, right? Because issues can come in the temple anytime, right? No matter what, no matter who is running the temple. But they don't get to the problem with a preconceived mind. Uh, yeah, treating you like a friend, yeah? You love friends too. <laughs> yeah. And when they speak to you, they try to, they always with a smiling and compassionate way. Huh? Facial expressions are also probably yes. affecting too, yeah? Yeah, why not? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> when teach Dhamma the time, they will understand where is your level. Ah, that's that's a very interesting part, right? Teaching Dhamma is, is a difficult thing for anybody. Not every monk can do that, right? Different monks know different things. So teaching Dhamma in a way how devotees understand the particular Dhamma thing. I think that is one of the... I think it, it is coming up in another responsibility here too. But it is, it is a wider part of the compassion. There's, these devotees, they offer dana to us, so we have to teach them the correct path, correct Buddhism. Is this thought? If that thought comes to a monk, that's such a very higher responsibility, right? Okay, can I talk a little too much about it? But anyways, you will notice compassion from monks and nuns in different ways as you present it. And then What's the fourth one? It's going to be Asutang Savin. Ah, it's interesting. Asutang Savin. Now I'm going to ask what is Asutang. So that'll be the fourth truth. one. Asutang. Asutang means the truth. Telling the truth. Not exactly. As, uh, Emma. Asutang. Asutang means Asutang means let me type for you. Dhamma, any Dhamma matter, Dhamma teaching that you have never heard from anybody. You may have not read that Dhamma from anywhere on the internet or from other person or in your life, but this particular monk is teaching you some Dhamma teachings you never heard. That is a response. So he is... <coughs> If he's a chief monk, he's asking another monk to teach Dhamma. If he can do by himself, it's also good. But the plan is, he thinks or she thinks we need to give the devotees Dhamma teachings that are very important, which they have never heard, they never know from anybody. Right? Sort of like enlightened. Is unheard. Tell me. It's like enlightening the devotee. Yeah, I think it is uh, to uh, add, add uh, more, more Dhamma knowledge to the devotee's mind, you know, Dhamma knowledge. Probably he, he or she, they think that uh, the, our devotees have to deepen, enhance their Dhamma knowledge. What, what they know is little <coughs> not enough, right? It's not enough. So they, they, they want to learn more. So I try to ask if I cannot, cannot do that. I ask another monk to teach. Or if I can do by myself, I do it for them. But the Dhamma things that devotees are getting to know have never been heard by them before. Okay, Asutang means never heard, unheard Dhamma things. 
Then the fifth is the fifth responsibility. Any questions about it? The fifth responsibility is now what we're gonna do. It's also related. Uh, sutang pariyo dapeti. What is sutang? Sutang pariyo dapeti. Now, sutang means, now for example, all of you know some Dhamma, right? There's no question to that. You all know some Dhamma teachings already at different levels. So, mm -hmm. another responsibility of monks and nuns is to develop the existing knowledge that you have. Let's say today uh, you learned the meaning of Namotasa Bhagavato Arahato. You know it before. But today you knew it from three other backgrounds. Uh, then your existing knowledge was developed. Right? It happened. Just a clear example. In the same way, if another monk, anybody, can teach you Dhamma so that your existing knowledge, your current knowledge of Dhamma is to be developed at the end of the Dhamma talk, then that is also a responsibility uh, of a monastic. Right? Then somebody might tell them, what about, I, ha I had a knowledge, but it was too incorrect. The monk is clarifying that. <laughs> it is also part of it. I knew it wrongly, incorrectly, but today only I knew it properly. Yeah. It's the same thing in a different way. Right? So, uh, so they are telling you what you have never heard. They are teaching you what you already know and then to develop your understanding about that term. Any questions about these two? Because these two go hand in hand. Have you ever benefited these two? Uh, fourth and fifth one in your in your Dhamma circle? When you yes. go to the temple, have you ever heard uh, Dhamma things that you never heard before? I think you should. Yes. I don't know. It depends, yes. on, depends on some people, right? Uh, it doesn't mind. Uh, it doesn't matter too. Maybe it could be Mahayana, it could be Theravada, right? Whatever your Vajrayana, whatever your tradition come from, but still new knowledge. And then whenever you go to the temple, you learn new Dhamma things on top of that you know them before, but new Dhamma things. It is also a responsibility. Now let's go to the last responsibility of a monk and nun. What is it? Sagasa Magda Archik. What does it mean? Showing the path to heaven. Okay. Sagasa means? Heaven, Magga, path, Achitkati mean show. Does it mean that the monk is saying, hey, this is the path to the heaven? You're going to go there. <laughs> How do we understand it? Interesting question. How many of you want to become reborn in a heaven? All of you. Huh? Nobody wants to become. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> like we go to Mahayana, you see the pure land. Right, Amitabha, right? It's kind of a heaven. And then here people talk about heavens too in Theravada Buddhism. How many of you really want to be reborn in a heaven? It's a personal choice. Don't worry. Say it aloud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? Maybe a better, better rebirth, right? So fundamentally, uh, it is the last responsibility of monks and nuns to show devotees that this is the way to be reborn in higher place. I think a lot of monks do that because chanting, offering, I think the end result is going to be reborn. But nobody knows what's happening after that. We just have a bare belief that this is happening. There are some uh, complications too, like what happened to Malika. You know, Malika did the uh, Queen Malika did the highest dana in Buddhism, but she was carried away by uh, some bad karmas to hell. She did something wrong, but not for a long time. She came back. She was reborn in a better place. But in the path to heaven, the responsibility of Buddhist monks, let's talk about it. Initially, it is. I agree with that. 
should be agreeing to that because not everybody can practice a lot of higher dhamma things. But what should be the what should be the uh, thing that monks and nuns should monks and nuns uh, should think about showing the devotees? Is it the heaven or is it the way how to uh, correct your wrong doing? Find the way out of the sansar. Heaven is in the sansar. Yes. Yes, Bhante is. Uh, uh, we appreciate the Sangha is teaching us all the tools, mm -hmm. uh, showing us the way. Uh, there's a way to really, you know, end the suffering. So uh, the Sangha are there to really guide us. Thank you. Because all the all the other religions also say we're going to teach you how to go to heaven. Huh? Is it true? Is there any difference between them and us? XYZ religion, they say, if you do that, you're going to go be reborn in heaven. In that heaven, there are these people. If you want to be with them, do this. Right? This is the simple way. So I think um, because we have different people as diakas and diakas, layperson, laywoman, layman and laywoman, we cannot teach them one thing. We have to give them two choices. The first choice is the heaven. It's not bad, right? Some people are suffering. They want to be reborn in a better place, right? When I say, Bhante, this life, I'm so worried. I'm not comfortable. I at least think about the next life. I at least become much, little better than this, you know? They say things like that. So it's okay. It's their choice. But monks and nuns also should tell them the main purpose of Buddhism the main responsibility of monks and nuns is not just to say the heaven. We're going to say that. It's a choice. But the most significant part that we're going to teach you is how to get out of the sansam. That should be the purpose of every Dhamma talk. Now, there is a sutta in Anguttara Nikaya or Sanguttara Nikaya. It says, when, a, when any Dhamma talk does not include the path, Noble Eightfold Path, uh, whereby a devotee is going to get rid of the sansara, that Dhamma talk is not going to be a Dhamma talk. Every Dhamma talk should include, at the end, as a summary, how this Dhamma talk is going to lead up to that Noble Eightfold Path. That means how to get out of the sansara. Because in next life, we may become reborn in a uh, heaven. What will happen to us after that particular life? Are we going to stop our sansara? No, we don't, we don't know where we're going to be reborn. Right? Remember the, the deva? There are some devas who have no clothes. <laughs> there is one story. Uh, one guy concealed other persons <laughs> when they went for swimming. So he kept concealing other persons' clothes. Be because he is a good person after the death, he was reborn as a deva, but he concealed the clothes so that the, the friend was very uncomfortable. So he was thoughtful about it just before he passed away. He was reborn as a deva without clothes. That means variations of becoming a deva. So we should try to become sotapan. I go back to the Ratana Sutta again. That is our plan. Whenever you have thoughts of becoming a sotapan, Let's say you are not going to be a Sotapan in this life. You are creating the most important good karmas. You may be reborn in a heaven, right? You may be reborn in a uh, Sagga, Sugati. But our purpose is to at least to understand what it is and then to have this plan throughout our sansara until we attain. So uh, although it is said that uh, uh, last responsibility is to show the path to heaven. Let's say it is a choice because I know that some people might not be too serious about it. So we should give them a choice, right? Otherwise, it's not good because they are suffering a lot. So let's give them a choice. You decide what, which, which one you want to do. <laughs> but uh, the monks and nuns should say, you know what? We don't know what's going to happen after this and that. Should keep in mind also that. You should aim for becoming a sotapan in the sansara. 
With that in mind, do more good karmas. Then that will be better. But if the monks and nuns do not get to talk about sansara, how to end the sansara, only talk about do this dana, you're going to be reborn in heaven, 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 heaven. That's going to be a serious teaching. Wrong teaching, I guess. Because they are trying to give people to crave for more lives after this. Make sense? Yeah, so let's let's look at these responsibilities this way. So once again, if we recap today, this is going to be the last session about uh, Sigal Sutta. Monks and nuns do six responsibilities. Now, the other nice thing is that, interesting thing is that, monks and nuns are the only group that do six responsibilities. All the other people, parents, children, teachers, students, husband, wife, employer, employee, friend, colleagues, and devotees, they all do only five responsibilities towards the other group. But only the monks and nuns are the, are the ones who do six responsibilities to other group that means to devotees. Interesting. Okay, any questions about the Singhalavada Sutta in general and today's uh, topic? Especially, I would like to know from our new folks any question that you had, whether uh, you could sort of concentrate on what we've been discussing. But they, this uh, last one is the the Sangha, you know, uh, guiding us and all that. Is there another part, the devotees? We did that last, last week, we did it, right? Last week. Oh, that yeah. is the one. Uh, yeah, five responsibilities. I Remember? See, see. Metta, yeah, metta yeah, yeah. loving kindness. Yeah, that's right. Kelvin, mm. any questions from your side? Wait. Anybody else? Took like six months to finish this, huh? Interesting. <laughs> six months. Six months, six directions, Bante. Six directions, yes. <laughs> but, okay, at the end of this sutta, what is more important is that we know how to cover the direction for any problem that can come from any direction. Now, that is what the Buddha says. Like, when you say east, from the east, there may be some problems that can come to you so that you need to fulfill the responsibility. So, again, you're going to cover that direction. That is how the Buddha says to that Singhala, right? Sigala was respecting six directions. The Buddha said, these are not the six directions which you respect. Six directions mean different uh, relationships between two groups. When you fulfill them properly, any fear, any problem, any issue that come from those directions will be under control. Let's say you are not fulfilling any of these. There are lots of problems coming towards you from all these directions. Your, your parents are shouting at you, your children are shouting at you, you are shouting at yourself. Whenever, wherever you go, you have issues because you are not fulfilling your responsibilities. In Buddhism, we are asked to fulfill our responsibilities, not first to ask our rights. That is the difference between our thinking. In Buddhism, it is said that first, you need to fulfill your responsibility. Then, Look for the rights. Okay. But in some cultures, they start from the rights. Huh? Right? They start from the rights. They don't know what is their responsibility. 
So then everything is going to be a mess. Now, uh, think, say for instance, I had a problem in teaching Kamma to children when I was in Ottawa. These young children, I think they were like 14, 15. Every time when they learned Kamma, the monks were teaching them, uh, this is what they taught. Kamma is a big concept. Nobody understood it. Yes, nobody understood it. It's about sansara. Uh, even Nibbana means ending the Kamma. So we don't know what this is. I was thinking, I was thinking about a plan, how to teach them come. Then I thought this way. Okay, there is a break in the Dhamma school. Okay. In the break, they are given some snacks. Huh? Some snacks, some buns, some tea, some chocolate. I was trying to ask them, who is going to clean the, the area of the whole or areas? So normally parents are going to clean that area. I said, from today, we're going to pick, we're going to uh, have a schedule for everybody that you're going to clean. Then they ask, why should we do it? Because this is karma. That means responsibility. <laughs> when you eat, you're going to clean it. Responsibility. Oh, really? Karma is responsible. Yes, karma is responsible. If I do something, I'm responsible for the outcome. How they learn it? Not from very, very deep concepts. Kamma is nothing but the responsibility. Responsibility means these responsibilities. In their life, in their mindset, it is uh, at least to clean up after they at their food. See, there are different ways to understand responsibilities and rights. Uh, I think we should never teach anybody rights uh, at, the, at the first uh, level. We should teach responsibilities. These are the responsibilities in life. Then rights will come to us because we are doing our part. All right. Uh, any questions? Uh, any more about uh, so the discussion or Siddhartha uh, Varasutta? I'm going to give you some uh, guidelines about uh, our next sutta before that, after that. All right, looks like no questions. So next week, we're going to start Dhamma Chakka Pata Sutta. Uh, I am preparing a document because you don't see a word-to-word -word translation of this sutta. Uh, I think uh, some people found even this sutta a uh, little difficult sometimes when I ask them to read this para, that para, you know, they don't, they don't find easy to find out the exact paragraph. So I'm going to just show you, because I know you're going to print this out before that. I'm going to show you something over here. Let me open the document. Okay, so we're going to read this. And I still have to do some edits. And then going to send it to you as a PDF. OK, here we go. You know how we're going to do it. OK. So Dhamma Chakka Patra Sutta. Now, what I did was I, I added numbers to each, each uh, I would say, most important sentences. But we're going to catch the meaning. But it's pretty easy for us to say, let's say, ask someone to read two to four. They're going to read in two to four. And the meaning is below. Make sense? And then... See, middle part, this is the starting point. Let's see. Some translations are not okay, so I got to change them. Uh, and then here we're going to see the Four Noble Truths. Ape, uh, and, Yoda. and this oh, is so the realization. Bad. Satcha, Dukkha Satcha, Aryas, those Arya Satchas. It's pretty easy, like let's say, me bikkave pubbe anusudams. To me, bikkave monks, pubbe means previously, anusudams means unheard, of dams means thing. Pretty easy. So, some people might think, okay, how many pages to 
Just this document crew, don't worry. Because we are only talk about the important stuff, right? Otherwise, don't worry about it. Yeah, declaring the enlightenment by the Buddha. Uh, sorry, uh, by the Buddha about Kondanya. First attainment. That is how. And then, you know, uh, a larger area of the sutta goes about how does the Dhamma Chakka went to different heavens. See the different heavens. That is what, see, from one to six to, uh, see, it's not mainly about the sutta. This is what happened when they listen to the, uh, the chanting. See, the main sutta runs from, I guess, it runs till this point, till the first attainment. Okay. Until here. The rest is how the Dhamma Chakka went to different heavens, Brahma worlds and all that. So don't worry. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to be starting from uh, here. How it happened. And then Buddha declines the Attakilamatani Yoga, self-modification and Kamsakalyatani Yoga. That means a passionate way and then finding the middle. I still have to do some edits. So just show you what's going to happen. From next week. So now you know what's going to happen. And I'll be, I'll be sending that as a PDF, Aliana, so you can share it with us. And it will go for a couple. We should take time for this because this is very important sutta. We should not just, you know, finish up faster. Like Singhalavada, I took time because Dhamma Chakapath and Sutta, I think you will get to listen it during the Vasa time. So you know what this is. When the monks are chanting, you know what it is. What is inside? Every time they chanting, there's a picture, visualization happening within you. First sutta Buddha gave to uh, anybody via settings. Okay, so we'll keep up with that. So, and next week we're gonna do, and uh, after next week, I think Ariana already mentioned. Let me see, seventeen we're gonna do. Twenty fourth we we're going to skip. 24th, because I'm coming to Malaysia for a conference, 23rd uh, evening, 24th, early morning. So I'll be having the conference on Saturday, Sunday. And there's a talk, I guess, at the temple, I guess, 25th Saturday. So we're going to be uh, continuing from March 31st after that. That means Dhamma Chaka Parthana will be done uh, from 17th. 24th, we skip. We're going to be doing 31st, continuing. 25th, we're going to be doing another talk uh, in the temple because uh, there are other people also joining, coming up. So we don't, we're not going to do something very deep for them. I'll let you know that. Any questions about anything? What are the moment? Okay, so I hope that uh, you learn and we're going to do the transference of merit part. Uh, I got a message from uh, Kim Mariana. I think you know that uh, she, she's traveling, so she could not manage to come. She's in Japan, so hopefully she will catch up our video later. So now we're going to transfer all the good karmas which we have been accumulating in all these ways. First, you all uh, discuss uh, kind of a replay about the Sigalovati Sutta. And then particularly uh, the last uh, set of responsibilities where we ended our single of the discussion after six months. Uh, so you learn a lot, you discuss. So may all the good karmas which we've been accumulating to this point of time be transferred to all the departed relatives who passed away in the name of all of you. Maybe your parents, maybe your relatives, maybe your siblings, anybody in this life and in previous lives. We may have had lots of people passed away in previous life. If the departed relatives were reborn in a painful life state realm, may they be able to receive all these good karmas and then to be reborn in a better place. Sugati, karma sugati. If the departed relatives were already reborn in a comfortable, pleasant life, where they can practice Dhamma, may they be able to deepen, enhance their knowledge of Dhamma, practice them, and finally attain the supreme 
bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Let's recite the stanza. Idang me yati nang ho tu sukita hun tu yatayu. Idam me yati nang ho tu sukita hun tu yatayu. Idam me yati nang ho tu sukita hun tu yatayu. May all the good karmas be shared by all the devas, nagas, and mahitikas. Devas mean the deities, nagas means uh, snake beings, serpent beings, and mahitikas means powerful beings. May all these good karmas be shared by all the devas, nagas, and mahitikas. May they be well and happy. May they protect and bless all of you, including reverend monks, and all of you, your family members, everybody in your family. Uh, May they also protect and bless you for good health, quality of life, prosperity, safety, and all the good things in your life. Uh, finally, may Devas, Nagas, and Mahidikas also attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. We'll recite the two sets of stanzas here. Ittavatach amihi sambitang punya sampadam sabbi diva anumodam tu sambasang patti sindhya Ittavatach amihi sambitang punya sampadam sabbi bhuta anumodam tu sambasang patti sindhya Ittavatach amihi sambitang punya sampadam Sabi satta anumodan tu sabi sang pati sitya aka satta che bhumanta deva naga mahindika punyantang anumodikumba chirang rakang tulu kasasana aka satta che bhumanta deva naga mahindika punyantang anumodikumba Chirang rakang to the senang. Aka satta che bumanta. Deva naga mahindika. Punyantang anuho dikumba. Chirang rakang to mang paranti. Chirang rakang to pang sadati. May we be in the company of the Kalyanamitus, not with the company of the Pavanitus. May all these good karmas. Be supportive and helpful for all of us to associate and continue the association with Kalyanamitas because Kalyanamitas are very important for us to maintain, deepen our Dhamma path. Thinking thus, we're going to recite this stanza. Imina punya kamene mami bala samagamu satang samagamu hu yavalimbana patantiya. Finally, may all the good karmas which we have been accumulating so far be supportive and helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nipah. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Abhivadana silis nichang vadha pachayinu chattaru dhamma vadhanti ayuvanu sukhang balang Ayura rugya sampatti sagya sampatti me vachu atu nibbana sampatti iminati saminchatu sadhu sadhu That's the end of the session, 49th session, and with this we're going to finish uh, the discussion of the Singhala works for today. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you very much, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Everyone, have a good evening. Good night, everyone. Thank we'll see you, you next time. Good night, Bhante. Good night, Bhante. Good night, Bhante. Thank you very much. Thank you.